Towards the end of the finale of The Queen's Gambit, an epic sequence unfolds. At the runtime of exactly 55 minutes and 55 seconds, as our protagonist appears to be stumped by her opponent's counter move, Beth's eyes shift upwards. The camera gradually pans past the pendant light towards the ceiling, revealing a chessboard plastered against it, a figment of Beth's imagination. The music intensifies and swiftly transitions into a triumphant and electrifying consonance. This is arguably the most memorable sequence of the series, and that is no accident. The significance of the soundtrack coupled with the symbolism of the scenes coalesces into an epic montage, and here's how. Let's go back to the first time we met 9-year-old Beth Harmon. She had just lost her mother, Alice Harmon, in a car accident, in which we later learn was an intentional suicide on Alice's part. And that marks the start of Beth's life at Methuen Home, where she meets Jolene and begins taking tranquilizers as instructed by the institution. Her nights are haunted with turbulent memories of her late mother and estranged father. That is until she discovers chess. With the aid of the drugs, Beth frequently visualizes chess matches against the ceiling. It is important to note that this served as a form of escapism for Beth, a distraction from the nightmares and her cruel reality. And eventually, this innocent escape turns into a fervent desire to win, to achieve tangible success in at least one thing in her fractured life. Unfortunately, one can never win all the time. Thus, whenever Beth falters, she indulges in substance abuse, especially in a first, then rather significant match against Harry Beltic. His ease and casual playstyle throws her off game, pushing her to consume drugs, which aids in her victory. This cements her continual reliance on it to win. Now, let's revisit that epic montage and understand why it's so powerful. Firstly, the montage represents her liberation from her almost lifelong dependency on drugs. All this while, she has had to consume drugs in order to win. And because of her addiction to drugs and alcohol, she had lost a match with Bogov once and came close to missing the opportunity to play at the Moscow Invitational. She could have chosen to call for a break and pop a pill, but no. Substance abuse has already damaged her life so much. Which brings me to my next point. The sequence also signifies Beth's defining choice to walk a divergent path from her mother. Beth inherited her mother's genius and her illness. Unlike her mother, whom unfortunately succumbed to her inner struggles and emotional fragility, Beth chooses to overcome the vices of her past, leading to her victory. This also teaches us that the insufficiencies of our parents or our elders isn't our fault, but our future is our responsibility. Thus, there is meaning and strength in this sequence whereby Beth actively chooses to relinquish her addiction and chart a healthy path of her own. Thirdly, her substance sobriety is a testament to her unadulterated ingenuity in chess, both for the audience and herself. It is a thrilling and triumphant moment where we finally witness Beth relying purely on her skills. This time, her imagination is not to escape from her dark, tainted reality, but rather used to propel her to victory. Now, she controls her imagination without the use of drugs, symbolizing her power over addiction. And finally, perhaps the most crucial, the music. As you may know, composers love to repeat certain pieces of a score you've heard during an earlier scene in another score. This repetition is used to evoke emotions in viewers as our minds subconsciously recall similar emotions we might have felt watching the earlier scenes. And the soundtrack for The Queen's Gambit is no different. Throughout this sequence, a track titled The Final Game plays, and if you listen to it closely, it is actually a fully realized amalgamation of specific pieces that have been played during the course of Beth's journey, from apprenticeship, her seating games, to her numerous gameplays. This is corroborated by the composer himself in his interview with Spitfire Audio. For example, training with Mr. Shaibo can be heard at the start of this sequence. And in the earlier scenes in which Beth imagines chess matches in her head, 
a similar but simplified version of a part of the final game plays, heard most clearly in this particular scene. Compare this with what we hear in this scene. The full realization of the score is an ode to Beth's triumph over addiction. So, the music behind this sequence represents her entire journey from training with Mr. Shaibo to her final match with Bogov. It subconsciously takes you back to all those scenes, making you feel the same emotions again. It aptly captures her entire character arc, coming to a close with a choice of substance sobriety. And that is how the significance of the soundtrack coupled with the symbolism of the scenes culminates into a powerful montage. Thank you guys for watching. I didn't originally plan to make a video on this series, but after finding myself re-watching this particular sequence, I realized that many other people felt that it was iconic and epic. So yeah, I wanted to express my thoughts on why this sequence is so powerful. I hope you guys enjoyed it and see you again soon.